Welcome back to the WFT Declassified Podcast. We have a special guest in the house, Steve, from Command This Podcast. How you doing, Steve? Hey, what's up, Ellie? Thanks for having me, man. Doing doing fantastic. Yeah, man. Glad to hear you. Glad to talk to you again. Um, tell the folks where they can find your work. Yeah, you guys can, uh, you know, we were formerly the Washington Football Addicts, but now you can find us at uh, on Twitter at command underscore this. And, you know, you can find us on all your major uh, podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google, and also on uh, YouTube. Yeah, make sure you check them out. They do excellent work. Shout out to Phil and Dev. Uh, over there with the Command This Podcast, man. Those guys are always putting out great content. So uh, once again, happy to have you here with us, Steve. So OTAs have started, man. Are, are you excited? I am. It's football. You know, you have these lulls in between the draft, pre-draft, post-draft. And here we are with a little bit of football. It's a nice little surprise. OTAs this week and next week. Football's yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully this season goes through without all of the drama that we normally get. But it wouldn't be Washington football without the drama, right? Nope, nope. It's always something. I mean, you have OTAs and now we're talking stadiums and owners and <laughs> all kinds of stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. It never it never ends. But at the end of the day, what really matters is the football season um, and how the team performs this year on the field. I, I think, I think I feel better going into this season than I have in a little while, even though we didn't have the exotic off season that I think some of us expected to have. Where are you at in terms of heading into this uh, next season in terms of excitement? You know, as Redskins slash Washington football team slash Commanders fans, we kind of say that every year, but I you swear do. this year, I really mean it. I'm with you. I'm more excited than I traditionally am. And a lot of that is linked to, I think we finally have some sort of resemblance of a franchise quarterback, which we haven't had in a very, very long time. That's why. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, I think we understate that so much, you know, that, that's so important to have a guy that um, can make the throws that you want him to make when he needs to make them. You know, I think we've had a lot of quarterbacks that have been good off schedule, but now we have a guy that can just execute the offense day, down in and down out. And look, nobody's here saying that we just signed Steve Young or, or, you know, John Elway or anything like that, Dan Marino and the like, but um, we have a guy that can do it, you know, first down to third down uh, behind center, right? That's correct. And it's not like we're asking him to be a world beater. Like you just said, Montana, uh, Steve Young, a Tom Brady. It's good teams and good players do routine things routinely. And I think we've struggled with that at the quarterback position to do some very routine things routinely. Yeah. Third and inches. Go get those third and inches. We can't get those third and inches. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think with Carson, we'll be able to have a lot, a lot more better fundamental football on offense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think this is a telltale year for our guy, Scott Turner, too, because now you got your quarterback. Now you have a professional quarterback under center. So let's see what you can do. Let's see who you really are as a play caller, as a game schemer, as an adjuster. You know, all of those things that we really haven't been able to tell the story of Scott Turner about. Well, that story starts now. Right. And, and and no more excuses. Like you said, you're going to have a quarterback who can sling it, make all the throws, even the deep out. You're going to have a healthy Curtis Samuel, who is supposed to be so imperative to this offense, Mr. Swiss Army Knife himself. So he's looking good at the uh, the small little clips we're seeing at OTAs. He's looking fresh. His cuts are sharp. And uh, I'm excited to see him play much more than we saw him last year. Yeah, and we got to be careful of falling in love with clips because Lord knows we do it. <laughs> you know, the, the Twitter cut ups and things like that. But it's exciting to see, man. I, you know, I, I can't be mad at that. You know. Yeah. Did you see the the clip of the JD McKissick little, little shimmy uh, got, after the uh, one hand? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, after the one hand, yeah. dude needs to pick his ankles up off the ground. I think that was uh, either Smith. I think it was Smith Williams. I wasn't sure, but that was not nice, nice little move. But yeah. we, we, Terry's not out there though, so it's the Curtis show for now. Yeah. Yeah. And and Steve, if you go in the way back machine, when we first signed J.D. McKissick and I remember Dev was like, oh, he's going to do all these great things. I'm like, the guy has like 40 rushing attempts for his whole career. I'm, I'm full on team J.D. McKissick now. You won. J.D. <laughs> yeah, McKissick, I, you win. I'm team J.D. Let's go. <laughs> that's true. And that's real. Oh, I, I will say to your credit, you were right a lot. I still have a text in my phone where you said, I want to say 
towards the end of Haskins' time with this team, he's going to Pittsburgh. And I was like, he ain't going to yeah. Pittsburgh. Sure enough, he goes to Pittsburgh. But yes, very humble of you to talk about J.D. McKissick. But you know, I'm I'm glad with his role too. He's he essentially he's he's a fifth wide receiver. You can you can say, and that gives you you know, like Ron says, I hate to say it, the the the, the cliche words, but position flex. Yeah. Um, so now maybe you don't have to keep a, a sixth or seventh wide receiver when you got J.D. Yeah, we got. I mean. Look across the board on offense. I mean, there's just position flex everywhere. Now, what you miss out when you have position flex is position expertise in some instances. And so hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us. Like, you know, we debate a lot about Curtis Samuel. Is he a true wide receiver or is he a running back playing wide receiver? Is he a wide receiver too? And, I, you know, I, I think he's 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 an athlete, you know, on the field. Because, you know, like when kids go to college, they're like, I'm a five-star ATH for athlete, right? Because they, they don't have a position. Um, that can be dangerous in the NFL, though. You need your wide receiver one. You need your wide receiver twos. Um, do you feel like Dotson's going to be that wide receiver two? I, I do. And we kind of talked about this last night on our show. It, Samuel and Dotson are going to be like two and 2.5. I think, I don't think it'll be safe to say one's number two, one's number three, because just the way they're going to be used. And, and, and this is not a popular opinion, but I said this back on our round table uh, live stream a while ago. I honestly think John Dotson is the Terry McLaurin insurance policy. Cause I just don't know about that contract. I Do just, you? Don't, I Are just, you? I, I think he is, you know, it's hard. I don't know why you draft a, a wide receiver in the first round for them to be your wide receiver number two. I, usually that's a veteran. So I'm just trying to put the puzzle pieces together and it, it would just suck to see Terry go, but I just think he's the insurance policy. Man, I, okay. So if that's the case, and, and I, by the way, I don't feel that way. Um, I will say that that's an, it, it, in some respects, it's an intelligent thing to do. And in some respects, it's kind of a, you know, preemptive planning like that can get dangerous. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have another special guest. We're going to bring Doc Walker in here. Um, you can find all of Doc Walker's work. He has a site, docwalker.com. He also has his podcast on Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, Doc Walker onto the show. And we're going to say welcome to Doc Walker. Doc Walker, how are you? I'm doing good, guys. How you doing? We are tremendous. <clears throat> and uh, again, thank you for your time. Uh, you know, we've been following your work for a long time. We appreciate you being here. This is your second time on uh, with us here. Um, new year, new season, right? And I was listening to you with Kime and, and you you gave a compare. I don't want to call it a comparison, but you had referenced Joe Theismann, I think, when you were talking about Sam Howell a little bit. Um, are you are you excited about the prospect of Howell? Well, I'm just excited about the prospects of all the unknown. Yeah. But um, – the pressure is on him, not me. Yeah. Because I just like his competitiveness. I don't judge football unless you're in full pads and there's some remnants of con full contact, which may not happen for him because they people him in red shirts and they don't hit quarterbacks and they don't play in the preseason for the most part. So I've kind of given up on my expectations. Yeah. I'll wait and see for the results. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And then I also heard you say something similar in terms of Robinson, the running back, and Stephen Davis, who's my all-time favorite running back for the Redskins yeah. uh, franchise. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's what it, – it's hard. Um, I always say they never judge a beauty contest with girls with with curl rollers in their hair. They wait <laughs> until they get dressed and get on the runway. Yeah. So why the hell is everybody making such a thing about this? That's everybody's prerogative. I'm not fanboy. It's not my thing. Right. I'm in the football. If yeah. NASCAR, do you judge NASCAR if they're not if they're not burning rubber? If they're no. not doing 200 miles an hour? No. There's no. not one article ever written on a car that's not going at least 200 miles an hour. That's just who I am. Because I don't have to fill a three-hour show block. I don't have to do any of that. To me, there are a lot of things that are mentioned that are totally irrelevant. I don't give a damn what the stadium's going to be. Because yeah. if the team's good enough, I'll drive to New Jersey to see them play, That's like right. everybody else does. We go to things we want to do. You've never heard anybody bitching about a concert. If they want to see the performers, they go see them. And then we're talking about seven to ten years down the road. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm trying to get out of the next to last place. <laughs> I need a competitive product. If the team is winning, I'll go to I'll go anywhere. Like I used to go to Baltimore to see the Orioles when I first got here. We had no other alternative. 
Our yeah. fan base is soft now. And so what I'm wanting is a return to glory. And if we get back to playing football the right way, all this other stuff will solve itself. It'll go away for sure. Um, you know, this team is starting to develop a habit of, and, and you've referenced this too, of taking guys out of position and moving them to other positions. Um, thus far, Gibson had a thousand yards last year, but there was a lot of opportunity left on the field. That gets a little tricky, doesn't it? When you're trying to make, you know, square peg, round hole type of situation, when you're trying to team build at this point? No, not really. It just, it's got to work. I mean, Nick Giaquino, trash man. I mean, but we won 11, 12, 14 games. I don't mind them experimenting. I judge you by your record. So how you judge it? I mean, don't make me the bad guy. I'm just the guy that's in the results, okay? Yeah. And I have a life. I don't live and die on everything that they do. I don't, I don't I just, hey, man, they can move them on any position they want to. When they start winning with that, then I'll go, wow, now that's pretty cool. I like the guys. I like AGG. I like all of that. They don't win enough games for me to make a big thing out of it. When sure. you get to 10, 11, 12 wins, now you got my attention. That's right. That's right. Hey, Doc, you know, in the third round, I, I thought we were going to go linebacker and the Kobe Dean was out there. Our linebacker core needs some work, but instead they drafted uh, Brian Robinson out of Alabama. So the, so the running back room is, you know, Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, big Brian Robinson and uh, Jared Patterson. Assuming that they only keep three, I mean, who do you think that odd odd person out is? Is, is it going to be – you think is Jared is sitting on the outside? I like Jared, but again, <laughs> ain't you know, seen him break a tackle. Right. I saw the kid in Alabama. I love him. He reminds me of big country. I like Stephen Davis. They're not going to scrimmage, in the, in the, so they're not going to see him in scrimmage. They don't hit in practice. Last year, they had the number one draft choice. They didn't even play him in the third preseason game. So, hey, maybe yeah. it'll work. But don't ask me to figure out some stuff that's ridiculous. I right. don't do that. Right. Okay? I went through stuff. I saw what works that may be old-fashioned. But it worked. So we'll see. They're I'll, all, it's experimental mode. And yeah. I'm pulling for them. My fingers are crossed. Yeah. Okay. But I, they can't prove I did nothing. It, if I hear you say the words, um, I'll be excited if I hear the words, he's a dog come out of your mouth with regards to oh, the be a dog. Yeah, when I hear, when I, when I hear you say that, when I hear no, you say that, no, that means they, the players. They leave the an country and attract the poodle, show dog. <laughs> I'm looking for pit bulls. And I, based on what I've seen, the moving OTAs, I'm impressed by it. That's good. I like the quickness. I like the – see, I don't judge anything not in full pads other than IQ. This team already shown me in OTAs high football IQ. Guys weren't sleeping in meeting. They weren't watching weren't watching uh, IG on their phones because I look by how many they, – they're, they're running two-minute offense. They've been in two days. Yeah. So that's impressive. So I look for things the average person not going to look for because I'm not the average person. See, I don't go further in reverse than most people are going fast forward in this sport. So all I'm telling you is that what I care about are things that might be boring to others, but a tentativeness, I want aggressiveness, and I've seen that. I'm impressed with what I've seen thus far. Now, how does that translate? I won't be able to tell until opening day because they don't hit a dead man in practice. And yeah. we're not going to see no scrimmage against anybody. So it's Jacksonville. That's what I'll be able to evaluate it. Speaking of the preseason, now they're down to three preseason games this year. Um, to, is that a challenge evaluating talent with that extra preseason game where you saw a lot of the younger guys get a lot of their time on the field where, you know, your starters are kind of resting and things like that? This depends on what your philosophy is. To me, a team in next to last place, Everybody should be playing. If Tom Brady's playing in the third one, yeah. I don't know why everybody ain't playing. There's nobody – I got to play everybody to make sure they're playing up to the level that I am accustomed to seeing, that I think it takes to win. They got a formula. I'm hopeful that it works. Yeah, yeah, as are we. Um, with with respect to, to guys being here or not being here, because we heard a lot about Chase Young – um, a little bit of about uh, Deron Payne. As a teammate of guys who may not be here, does that affect you in any way or in, in, in terms of how you feel about them or how they're getting prepared for the season? 
No, not my teammates. I'd hated their guts, but I didn't play with anybody. We were all there. Yeah. See, because we had to be there to make money because right. the, the, you weren't making this kind of money. So we were kind of collectively drawn together by, by, by poverty. And so that's a collective there. We had to win to make extra money. See, I think the whole league is ridiculous and they should re-incentivize this whole thing. To me, you ought to get a million per player to win a Super Bowl. Then yeah. you wouldn't have to beg anybody to go anywhere. They'd be there. But these jackasses do things as backwards. And as a result now, they say, well, it's not mandatory. Well, then why the hell are you pressing them then? Right. Either make it mandatory or shut the F up. Okay, because your results are all I care about. Clearly, your players are not all in. Because even if I didn't have to participate, I could show up. You're filthy rich. You ain't got no jobs. You ain't doing right. nothing else. So I can be there. They're not asking that much of you in the offseason. So if you give them the finger for that, then you've just told me who you are. And that's their fault. They slap C's on babies' chests. Okay? Yeah. What toddler in your house drives? None of them. Okay? Yeah. That's what the kid uh, – so that's their stupidity. You have to earn captainship. I don't care if you're drafted, the first guy drafted. I don't care how much you make. That's not leadership. That's commercialized. Yeah. That's, that's just – but again, yeah. it's not my problem. They got to deal with it, okay? They're paying for it. You judge them based on their results. That's what I do. If Chase Young never shows up, it's on him. There's nothing they're going to do about it. It's not like he's going to lose any time, okay? And he's hurt. So what was he going to do? Nothing on the field, but in yeah. terms of love for his teammates, it's a display, and plus the mental game, he's learning something, unless they're not teaching anything new, and he's already figured it out. But just thank yeah. God that's not my problem. You know, Doc, you said something a few minutes ago about a team that's trying to crawl out of the basement, trying to crawl out of being you know second to last place. We saw the departure of Tim Settle and, and Matt Ioannidis, who I really wish we would have would have kept. And then Deron Payne's going into a contract year, which is still unresolved. But we did draft, you know, Big for Darren Mathis, also another another Bama Bama boy on the on the offensive line, excuse me, defensive line. But how do you how do you think that defensive line is shaping up to be? I, I think a team that's crawling out of the the, the basement. I, I think defensive depth is huge, and we let two very very good defensive tackles go possibly a third if they don't resign pain for their Delta bringing in just for Darren Mathis. Uh, how, how do you see the defensive line shaping up? Again, I'm not falling in love with anybody next to last place. I love all those guys. It's been great, but if I can't win with you, you have no value. to me. I'm looking for combinations that I can win with. I need to win 10 to 11 games. Clearly I couldn't accomplish that with the guys we had. So to me, everybody's expendable on this team to me. Until that prove I can I can I can't win with them. So what's the value? Because you like them, because they're from a certain school, because they were drafted high. Not by me, brother. Means nothing to me. I'm looking for dogs, and a dog is going to be at everything he's got to be at to get better, because he can't win unless they're collective. So that's their issue, not mine. Um, Scott Turner this year has Carson Wentz as, as QB one. And I think when you talk about performance and evaluating what they have done, it's been a little bit difficult with Scott Turner because of the quarterback situation there. Um, do you think that Carson Wentz gives him based on the history of Carson Wentz in the NFL, um, an opportunity to fairly judge and evaluate Scott Turner this year? Yeah. If he keeps his head on straight and doesn't try to turn bad plays into great plays, Take the sack, Carson. You got skills. His issue to me yeah. is neck up, not neck down. The boy is a freak. I've seen him ground level when I was a sidelines guy. I okay. saw him come out of Chris Baker's. Chris Baker had a bear hug on this guy, and he became Gumby. It slid out of it and ran for 25 yards. The dude is he got mad skills. Now, can they get it out of him? He just got kicked out of his family's house and his cousin's house relatives told him to get the hell out okay yes. so now it's between him and scott to bomb and i believe coach turner can get this done this is all about building a relationship this kid needs to understand this is his last shot as qb1 oh he'll be in the league he'll get another five ten years of money like the, all these backups that are pathetic yeah. in the league but in terms of being a one this is it and i think he 
Well, I'm hopeful that he will embrace this. The talent is there. I mean, you just see that, first of all, the guy can see over the line. Yeah. They're going to see him. He can see them. It's a whole different, whole different deal. Mm-hmm. This guy. Whew. So hopefully it works for him and them. Yeah. Doc, switching back over to the defensive side of the ball. Early on in the beginning of the season last year, we had all we had the healthy 11 was, was good to go. And I feel like Jack Dario wasn't as creative because he relied on those guys' pure athletic ability to get to the quarterback. We didn't see a lot of stunts. We didn't see a whole lot of craziness. What do you think Jack needs to do this year, given that everyone's going to be healthy and we have no Landon Collins, uh, so it's going to be the Cam Crow show in the back. How do you think – what does he need to do to get that defensive uh, unit um, – to the quarterback and, and making some uh, aggressive plays on, on that side of the ball. Well, I'm a Jack fan. I think Jack, I mean, he works with what he has. I thought he built, they trusted him. He started to trust him. I thought he overcame a lot with them. I think he's got a tough room to deal with. It's amazing. He lost his guys and they got better. They started playing the rules and structure. That tells you all you need to know. I don't know what the hell's going on yep. in the D line room, but there's something going on in there. They decided that it was okay with them. See, they brought their entire staff back. So that tells me they were pleased with the results. Okay. (laughs) That's it. So I said in January, if they bring that group back intact, then I'm going to throw up in my mouth. And they did it. Okay, good. So let's see what happens. It's on them. It ain't on me. Y'all saw what happened. How the hell you lose two ones and get better? Because these guys were playing the context of the defense. You may get... After June 1, who knows what happens. But I like Cameron Curl. I like the kid out of Louisiana, uh, the Raging Cajun. He's a downhill killer. Comes in on an attack mode. And I like Mayo. I don't know what everybody's sleeping on Mayo about. And I like 55 and 52. They're young studs that can run. But until they start running through blockers and not around blockers, they can't play for me. So but Mayo can. I need a guy who's a mic backer. And then they play so many variants of fronts that depends on down and distance that, you know, I just need somebody to do more than they did last year because that earned them next to last place. So anybody they can get, I need new faces, new places, and better results. Yeah. And and, um, and one of the main reasons I wanted to would chat with you today was AGG and his conversion to tight end. I know you played the position. I'm not going to ask you how you think he'll do, but just – in terms of what his immediate struggles might be trying to convert to that position, can you give us some context on what, uh, you know, some of his – Well, he's a hell of an measures? athlete. Yeah. He's a hell of an athlete. Yeah. Um, he can go get it. Now, do I need him to run off tackle? Well, no, I got bait for that. I got guys I can get that for. Yeah. I need him, like Clint Divya, getting a nasty split and just be held on the defense because they got to defend him. But I like these kids they have. Um, I think – that Hodges, I mean, they got length. They got a lot of different things. But, again, it's just me. I don't evaluate football players until I see them in pads in a live environment. Yeah. So I have to wait till the season. But on paper, which you don't beat anybody on paper, we look great. That's the problem. We always look great on paper. Then the game starts, okay? Now, here's the contrast to this. Baltimore played everybody and lost half their team. Right. They practiced like Spartans. Patriots, Seahawks, Steelers, Ravens. That's my kind of football approach. Yeah. See? yeah. And it don't mean it works. Half the team was shot. And guess what? Still damn near won more games than we did and was a threat to get in the playoff. I don't care how you – and it just depends on your style. But as far as I'm concerned, there's only one way to play the game. And it's how you practice, and it's how you play. You got to kiss somebody behind to get them to show up on time, and you tolerate that. That's on you. Guys don't want to come to certain things, and you still kiss their behind. Good luck with your results. I'm not buying anything they put out until they win 10 or 11 games. And they're capable because I like the roster. I like the talent. I'm just waiting to see it fire a clip. It's a beautiful gun. But if it don't fire, it's useless. It's a water gun. Yeah, that's right. And, and Doc, you mentioned something. I think a lot of the collective bargaining agreements and the stuff that's going on with the the, the players' union and the NFL this year has has kind of taken that level and that that 
stuff that you're talking about out of out of the NFL, which I think a lot of the uh, coaches would want to see. You know, two a days, hitting pads, all that stuff. That Not you for can those evaluate teams the I mentioned. They'll pay, right. I'll pay a fine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Pay a fine. Yeah. So don't, don't I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to hear about what the league does because there's other people. This league cheats. The Patriots cheat. There's people breaking rules all the time. Well, going up to the tape measure on it. All right. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. At that's all. Fair. That's the decision they make. Live with it. That's fair. Hell, we went damn to eight games without a trainer. We did. What rules is that book? It's in that book. <laughs> man, y'all don't want to do this with me, man. I ain't that guy. Seriously. Y'all well, want to pat it on the back and be chill. Go ahead and do your thing. I support the program. I want to see the kids win. Yeah. yeah. But I only know one way to do it. I've only seen it done a certain way. I'm open to change. Okay. I'm on social media. I got a smartphone. I'm not completely Archie Bunker, but all I'm telling you is that <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing. I want yeah. to see results. That's all I'm saying. I'm that's pulling a, for him. That's that's fair. But my, my question was was alluding to Doc. So you said, "Show me on the field. Show me on the field. Yeah. Don't be don't be the paper champ. Show me on the field." And one person that showed us on the field is is you know scary Terry McLaurin and he's coming up for a contract deal. They kind of missed the boat a little bit with all these big batch of free agent wide receivers getting around 20 million, the AJ Brown, Ooh. Christian Kirks, they're making some crazy money. And I think the team kind of missed that window to get him in a, in a solid deal. So he's not here, but how I don't important... think they could have anticipated that. I agree. because It blew me away. Yeah. I couldn't have anticipated what is happening with these salaries. Now I say that as a moron sitting in the basement, but if I was paid to do that, Maybe it'd be different. They pay people like stock market. There's somebody who's supposed to be projecting. There's somebody who's supposed to be predicting. I thought that's what management's all about. Yeah. So what you're saying is that either they don't have nobody in that department or they would sleep at the switch. It's got to be one or the other. This is a business. It's not a hobby. You know, we're not supposed to be getting caught off guard with anything. If this is what you do for a living. Now, if this is side hustle for you, maybe they are a real estate development company. Maybe that's what their real thing is. But any football program worth their salt is supposed to figure this out before it happens, okay? Now, if I'm Terry's family, then I'm, I'm just waiting. I want out <laughs> unless, yeah. unless the quarterback can make it happen. I cannot be Houdini, a contortionist, catching balls underthrown, overthrown around. They, you can only do that when you're young. You can't pay yeah. me over 25, 26 doing that. But if yeah. I got a guy throwing me dimes, oh, I'm easy. locked in. Terry's a great guy. I would hate to lose him. He's one of the best young men I've ever met. But, again, what's our history? We give our people away for nothing. We got Hall of Fame tackle in San Francisco. We got a quarterback in Minnesota. We haven't been better than him yet. See, and we let people get away. So I'm hopeful <laughs> – this front office will save it, but time will tell. Absolutely. Um, last question, Doc. We got Dak in the division. Um, you know, Dak is Dak. He's going to ball when he needs a ball. Um, you got Jalen Hurts in the division now. Um, are you a fan of Jalen Hurts' game? Do you see him much? I'm a fan of him as a competitor. Yeah. They led the NFL in rushing. You got to pass to win in this league. Yeah. I mean, they'll put an eight man box up. Really good teams. He ain't gonna be if you're a really good team, that's you just play right to the hand. But he's a freakish leader. I love everything about him. But the guys I see that play in that thing they call the Super Bowl, they don't look like him. Yeah. I mean, so now if he gets improves in, as a passer, they're gonna be hell on wheels. I love everything else about it. Leader can make you miss, will run, stud. Doesn't miss anything. In the weight room with his boys, you'd love to play with him. You know, he's going to be at everything he's supposed to be at. He can put that C on his chest, no doubt. Absolutely. Hey, Doc, we thank you for your time. We appreciate you coming on with us, man. Have a great day. Hey, man, thank you guys, man. Yes, Doc. Sorry to bust your bubble, man, but this is what I do, man. Straight up, uncut funk. Hey, we need that. Love we it. need that. Love it. Love it. Got to have it. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see you check you out on the podcast. We'll find out. Like I said, we like seals. It ain't for everybody. Life is too, it's too hot. Water's too hot for us. They want to <laughs> yeah. be pampered, laid down in bed. Okay. Yeah, 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 enjoy yeah. your enjoy your uh weekend, guy. Happy Memorial Day. You as well. Thank, Thank you, Doc. All right. You too, Doc. Take care.
That was great. Yeah, I uh, appreciate Doc Walker coming on. Um, you know, he has a lot to say. And look, Doc has always been Doc. You know, that that's the one thing about it. And I think, you know, fans have to understand that that's a guy that's been around. You know, he's not just been yeah. in, you know, at the stadium buying tickets. He's a guy that's been around, around the team, around the players, around the people that make decisions. So when he talks, he knows what he's talking about. Um, and you know, it, there, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with the football season. Um, and, and obviously when it's, when it's May, you want to be optimistic because nothing's happened yet. Right. Not, nothing has gone right or wrong yet. So right. everybody's still in the mix for a Super Bowl. So, um, Steve, any final thoughts? No, it was, it was great talking to Doc. Like you said, he's, he's old school. He's seen it before for a lot of us content creators. This is generally, we'll call this generally new for us. We've only been doing this for, you know, so many, so many years, but he's been doing it forever. He calls it how he sees it. He, he knows things are out of his control and he just wants to see some dogs and he wants to see it on the field. So I appreciate that. And uh, love some Doc Walker. Me too, man. He was great on the radio. Make sure you check out his podcast, the Doc Walker podcast on Patreon. Make sure you go check out his website, docwalker.com. Make sure you subscribe to the Command This Podcast with our guy Steve, Phil, and Dev over there. Um, they are always putting out great content. Go follow those guys. And, of course, follow the WFT Declassified slash where the Commanders Declassified. Whatever you want us to be, we're that Declassified, all right? Make sure you're sub there. Um, everybody, we will check you next time. Steve, have a good one. And to you. Peace.